Boop. Happy Monday. Today is Monday, September the 27th, 2021. Today's daily Bible readings come to us from Psalm 140, Esther 4, 1 through 17, 1 Peter 1, 3 through 9, or you could have read Psalm 5, Zechariah 6, 9 through 15, and then 1 Peter 1, 3 through 9. Again, I'm going to take a look at Esther and um, talk about what's up with Mordecai. Uh, so the story, the story so far, we actually looked at this Thursday, and then uh, the continuous text, semi-continuous text, have followed the story of Esther so far, and uh, we missed Friday, Saturday, and so we're catching up now. So the, the story so far is that Vashti's out, right? Esther is in as queen. Uh, Mordecai is the one that hooked her up, so to speak, with the king. Um, and then Haman, bad guy Haman, who we missed earlier in the story, he really hates Mordecai and hates Mordecai's people, the Jewish people. Um, and so he's set up this big plan to not only kill Mordecai, but kill all his people too throughout the kingdom. And he's kind of tricked the king into doing this. Because remember, part of the main idea of the story is that the king's kind of out to lunch on all this. Um, so he tricks the king into signing this death warrant, basically. Um and then he goes and he builds a gallows in his backyard for Mordecai. And the translations go back and forth. Sometimes it talks about gallows, like, you know, like for hanging people. But other places, it's basically like a, a, a spike to impale people on. So either way, it's not good. Uh, spike's really bad. Anyway, so Mordecai, in the story that we arrive at today, this part of the story, he's found out about all this and it, you know, rightly so puts him in a funk and he dresses in sackcloth and ashes, which, you know, that's, that's how people used to do that. So next time you're feeling really bad and you want everybody to understand that you feel bad, go get some burlap and dump some ashes on your head and they'll know. Um, so he dresses in sackcloth and ashes to publicly mourn the oncoming fate of his people, the impending doom. Um, and so that's where we pick up today. He's dressed like this. He's out in the courtyard and, uh, and Esther, his niece, secretly unbeknownst to the king, sees him. And so she sends word because she's like, you know, what's up with my uncle? And so sends the messenger down to be like, hey, what's up? You okay? You looking a little rough there, bud. Anyway, so he proceeds to tell them this story of doom, despair, and agony um, but long story short, Mordecai sends word back about the impending doom um, and urges Esther to speak to the king about it. Esther, and you can kind of understand when she gives the explanation, especially having, you know, what happened to Vashti, um, and apparently there was a bigger threat after that, I'm not really sure, uh, but Esther balks at this and she's, she's basically like, one does not simply walk in on the king. And I said king because his name's really funky and I can't say it well. Um, so that's the message she sends back. She's like, uh, I'd love to jump in on this. I'd love to go just run in and talk to the king about this. But you don't just walk in. There's a whole thing. Like the king has this golden scepter and he has to point at you with it. And then you're permitted to come into his presence. So yeah, no, I don't think I can do that. Mordecai responds with, okay, I get it. But um, he, he says to her, you know, you need to decide if you want to remain silent and be a part of the problem or if you want to be a part of what God will do. And he's not like, he's not even this idea that uh, God, you know, if you don't do this, the people won't be saved. He's really faithful that God's going to do something. He doesn't have uh, any doubt in the world, I think, that God is going to act somehow, either to prevent it or act after the fact to, to you know, avenge them. He knows God's going to do something. And he's saying to Esther, he's like, you know, you're in this unique position. You're in this unique place for such a time as this. And so you got to decide, are you going to be a part of what God is going to do? Or are you just going to sit back and remain silent and watch it all happens? And he <laughs> throws this in too, last parting shot. And if you think your silence is going to buy your safety, don't bet on it. So Esther needs to decide if she wants to participate in what God's going to do, um, what God would do, or not. And th that's, you know, I talked earlier, like when we brought this up on Thursday, when we hit this book, um, 
that is, you know, as as far as like if you're gonna, you know, die on the hill of historical accuracy in the Bible, this is not the book to do it with. Um, but there's still lots of good lessons, and it leaves us with the question like, what is your time? What is the time that that you should get involved? Is there a time such as this that you should open your mouth and say something? Um, will you participate in what God is doing, what God is doing for the sake of justice, for the sake of righteousness? Um, or are you just going to sit by silently and just watch it all happen? Anyway, that's the DBR for today. Get out, enjoy the day. We'll be back tomorrow. Talk to you later. Boop.